I recently released a video about me getting hired to mix a song about a fireman that was allergic to cats. I will link to that video in the description, of course. And you asked me if I can show you how I mixed it, what I was thinking about, what plugins I used. So in this video, I will show you all. I will show everything, but I will do it as fast as I can because otherwise we will get bored. So let's get into it. The rough mix that was sent to me from the client, it sounded like this. And so on. It's a pop song, but it's nine minutes long with a four minute ukulele solo. So it's just your typical pop song. More about the ukulele solo later. Let's start with the drums. Normally I start with the most important instrument of the song. Might it be a piano, guitar, vocal? In this case, for you, I will start with the drums. First of all, I didn't use the inside kick drum mic because it sounded like this. That was unusable for me, so I used the outside bass drum mic. That sounded really good, together with the trigged sample. Now the bass drum sounds like this. The only thing I did was on the outside bass drum mic, I cut some low mids with an EQ. And then I bust the bass drums together using this front door, which is sort of a mic pre-harmonic distortion thing. It's not distorting, it's just some kind of uh, mojo in it. And then a little bit of EQ, and, and I even took out more low mids. Probably I did that in the final tweaking of the mix. The snare drum I had a little bit of problem with, with because when it was sent to me, it sounded like this. A lot of ringing. So I first flipped the face on it because it wasn't aligned with the overhead. And then I used this guy to get rid of the ringing frequency. But this guy also takes away the harmonics of the ringing, the overtones. And that wasn't enough, so I used another EQ to take away more of the ringing. The bottom snare mic, I took away some low end because there was a lot of bass drum in it. And also that ringing frequency. Then I bust the snares together, use this front door again, uh, and then another EQ, taking away more of that ringing. Raise the bottom end of the snare drum around 100 hertz with this EQ, and raise the top end, the treble on the snare drum. When I did the final tweaking of the mix, I thought there wasn't enough bottom end on the snare drum, so I also put this R bass on it. 160 hertz, raise the bottom end a little more. The snare drum now sounds like this. Fine. Hi at, I only high passed the toms. I took away some ringing frequencies and also boosted a little bit in the high mids where the attack is. That's the only thing I did. And then put them into a bus together with the front door again and the Sheps Omnipressor with some distortion, a little bit of compression and a little bit of EQ taking away some mid frequencies and boosted the top end. By the way, what plugins to use is up to you, or, or me, of course. I use the plugins I know the most. I use the plugins I'm fastest with, but now comes an exception. The overheads was the boss in this song because I wanted the drums to be further back in the mix, but still powerful. And to get them further back in the mix, I wanted the room sound as much as possible without interfering with the punch of the drums. And therefore, I started with the overhead. And here I used a plugin I haven't used before. This is IK Multimedia, some kind of tape machine, but it worked. And then a little bit of EQ taking away some mid frequencies where the snare drum was most prominent in the overheads. One of the room mics I didn't use, the other one, the room far. Let's raise it, this because it's a bit uh, special. I flipped the face on that also because it wasn't aligned with the overheads, but it came to me like this. The first thing I did was I made it stereo with this BX Stereo Maker. This is a fake stereo, but you will hear the difference. And then I put an EQ on it and I adjusted a few things, as you can see. I put an extressor on it, which is a compressor, the distressor maybe. 
and then this BX Digital version 3 from Brainworks Plugin Alliance, where I boosted the sides a little bit to make it even more stereo. I also adjusted the EQ a little bit on this. Now it sounds like this. Rather mushy, but together with the drums it works. But I have another room mic, but this is a fake room. I send all my drums, including the overhead, to a bus, and there I put the Ocean Way Studios. And I have the blend on reverb, so it's like full reverb signal, full wet, you might say, on this plugin to make a fake room. And it works in context. The only thing I did was I high passed the signal in to get rid of the low end from the bass drum. That track sounds like this. And all the drums in the bus. On the bus I have a notch filter which took away some low uh, mid frequencies. I have a sort of SSL style compressor and then the Sheps Omni Channel once again. A little bit of saturation, did I do anything more? No, nothing. But I'm not finished with the drums there, because I have parallel buses for my drums. I have a parallel compressor that is pretty nasty. But it's not much volume on it and then a tiny bit of drum distortion. No reverbs on the drums except a couple of snare hits in the song where I raised a splashy plate reverb. By the way, my template is rather complicated, so if you want to see my template, how my workflow is, uh, leave a comment and I will do a video about it. I made a video about it, but it was a long time ago and many things have changed. Let's go to the most important instrument of the song and that is the acoustic guitar, because the whole song started with this acoustic guitar. This acoustic guitar was recorded with five microphones. We have left, right, room far, room near, and close. I don't know what the naming is, but I used three of them. I used the mono uh, mic, and then I used the room mics as sort of a stereo pair and these are not so loud so it's a mono signal what i used on it when i bust it was i eq'd a little bit with a dynamic eq in the top to get rid of a little bit of those harsh picking noises and then i compressed it with uh, this 3a and uh, then a soft limit from apogee that smoothed the guitar out a bit and make it sit on top in the mix an Echo Boy delay, I think it's in stereo, yes it is. And a little bit of room reverb. And the room reverb is the Seventh Heaven from Liquid Sonics. The other acoustic guitar I treated a little bit differently because they were recorded in the same way with five microphones. But here I used the left and right microphone and I delayed one of the signals a little bit, 16 samples. That's not much at all, but it made it wider. And it's a little bit of EQ and a little bit of compression, Logic's compressor on each track, left and right. And on the bus, there's a multiband compressor keeping it steady together with the bass and drums. A little bit of uh, longer reverb on that, and that longer reverb is the Valhalla Vintage Verb, verb. two seconds. Now let's go to the vocals, the lead vocals. The lead vocals should be green, everyone knows that. So here they are. Now we are getting into more complicated template stuff. So the lead vocals is this track. No plugins at all. But I send it to a lead bus where I have an EQ taking away a little bit of low mid and high pass it. I have a deesser. I have a vocal rider before the compressor because I want the same amount of compression throughout the song. And I don't want much compression, just a little bit but all the time. So I used an LA-2A style from Native Instruments and I used this CLA-76. Both are compressing just a tiny little bit. But I have a more aggressive compressor on a parallel bus to that vocal 
with another CLA-76. Those tracks are sent to a vocal sub, or which I call it, where I have a multiband compressor, taking mostly round in the middle because the vocal character changes when uh, they sing loud. A little bit of R6 EQ, an EQ I rarely use. I just, I was probably bored. Shep's omni-channel once again, a little bit of distortion and uh, nothing more and then sugar to spice it up a little bit because probably i adjusted this in the final tweaking i needed a little bit more air on the vocal and then we come to effects i have a room reverb a plate two plate reverbs and a delay and let's go and look what they are so the room reverb the office actually is this sunset uh, sound studio reverb reverb from IK Multimedia a new reverb for me but it sounds really really good I'm gonna use this more the short plate is the UAD EMT 140 the long plate is the UAD EMT 250 and then just a mono delay which is a stereo delay on the choruses it's automated so I go from a mono delay with the echo boy to a stereo delay with the echo boy and the delayed signal is also sent to reverbs in this case they are sent to a room reverb the valhalla vintage verb on 1.4 seconds so let's listen where are we now we need some bass the bass track that was the only track I needed to adjust the timing of on a few spots. Everything was very well performed, very well played. The bass track was a little bit stressed in a couple of spots, so I just adjusted that timing. On the original bass DI track that was sent to me, I put an Amplitude 5 uh, with an Ampeg, Ampeg bass amp on it virtual bass amp but then i also copied that bass track to another track where i first put had to put an eq and then this uh, overdrive from waves tube screamer ish and then just logic's bass amp so i got a distorted signal so the bass have more presence in certain parts of the song choruses and ending and then i sent those two to a bus and on the bus there's an eq taking away some low mids and also high pass it because it made the bass fatter if i high passed it and then a comper a favorite plugin of mine they, these are two compressors in one uh, in serie so they are both taking just a little bit of dynamics to make the bass more even then another eq after the compressor i don't know why and uh, then the omni channel with some distortion and taking out some low mid and raising the bottom end a little bit and then i use the logic compressor to duck the bass when the bass drum hits just a couple of dbs now it sounds like this what more do we have we have some percussion congas i didn't do much with it's just a pair of congas mic'd with the two mics i have the kramer tape on them and then the Shep's Omni Channel boosting a little bit of top, taking away a little bit of low mid, a little bit of room reverb. And on the percussion, the percussion reverbs are the short reverb is uh, the Seventh Heaven from Liquid Sonics, and the longer is the Valhalla Vintage verb. verb. No surprises there. The egg was recorded in stereo and I didn't use that. I got rid of one of the tracks. I put an overdrive on the egg. Uh, because that compresses the signal a little bit and also take took away a little bit of the harsh high frequencies and i did exactly the same thing with the tambourine and then we have some cowbells and some claves which are just easter eggs that comes in and out of the song on a few spots i don't think i have to show you those i didn't do much with them we have some electric guitars on the song here are some arpeggio stuff from the electric guitar <laughs> Thank you. 
nothing to say about them. I high pass them and put a little bit of delay on them. That's all. Just to make sort of a back wall. Before we go into other electric guitars and ukulele, let's uh, go into the background vocals. The harmony vocals on the chorus is exactly the same as the lead, except that it's more compressed to keep it steady. And then we have some uh, fuller background vocals with more people. And I had to compress each individual track a little bit uh, before I sent them to a bus. But on the bus, that's not much. A little bit of EQ, this sugar to make the vocals airy, and some reverb. And that's what I did with most of the vocals. You should really listen to the song just because of the ukulele solo, because it sounds wonderful. It's a really good performance. And the ukulele I treated like this. First an EQ. Raised the bottom end of the ukulele because that is at 400 hertz. Took away a little bit of the mid frequencies. And then I compressed it a little bit with an LA3A. A little bit more compression with uh, Pro MB, and this was to get rid of the harsh transients that comes with a close miking. I used a soft limit to smooth it out and make it sit on top of the mix with some distortion. And then a little bit of delay. And a little bit of reverb, in this case the Valhalla Vintage Verb. What a surprise. And the final guitars I don't have much to say about. They are electric guitars, they are distorted. I used a little bit of EQ, I used a little bit of room reverb. I didn't use all the mics they have provided because they were recorded with four mics. I used one or maybe two and now the song sounds like this. But we should check out this Ennio Morricone style guitar. I didn't do much to it. I used one of four mics and I put a spring reverb on it. Let's check out my master bus because this is a little bit special. All the tracks are going through buses and things in my template, but they end up here on the stems. So I have a drum stem, percussion, bass, guitar, keyboard, orchestra. There's no orchestra in this song, but anyway. Lead, background vocals and effects. And all stems have first this console thing from Analog Obsession. It just makes a little bit of mixing console character to your mix. If you like that, check this out. It's free. Link is down below to Analog Obsession. And then on every stem is this BX Master uh, desk. And I take away 6 dBs of volume on each stem. That means I can have my faders high in the mix without blowing up my master bus. I use this because this also gives a little bit of character. From the stems I have parallel compressions. One for the drums and bass. In this case I use the UAD Fairchild. I normally do that because it mushes up the bass and drums in a good way if I want the drums and bass to sound acoustic, which I wanted in this case. And for all the other instruments, I use the UAD 1176. Let's look at the master bus. I set this up when I have the instruments with most energy in the song on the go. In this case, drums, bass, one of the acoustic guitars and vocals. Then I set up my master bus. So everything after that, everything I mix, I will hear through the master bus. First, we have an EQ, only high pass filter at 26 Hertz because there's no music down there. Then a Pultec EQ. Boost a little bit of top, a little bit of low, and also attenuating a little bit of low, the Pultec trick. The UAD Fairchild once again, but this doesn't compress. Nothing. N nada. Niente. Rien. These are only used for the character of the plugin, the transformer emulation. But this compressor compresses a bit. This is the Shadow Hills mastering compressor in dual mono and I use on this song both the optical and the discrete. Sometimes I use one of those, in this case both. It's very gentle. I don't like a lot of compression on my master bus. Then I have the Studer tape machine uh, which smooth the mix 
a little bit together. And then I have this BX Digital V3 once again. And this I automate. I didn't automate the EQ on it, but I automated the stereo width. So I have it a little bit narrower in the verses and wider in the choruses, just to make the song more alive. And hopefully you will get the feeling that they have played this song together a little bit more. I have a few other plugins on my master bus, but I don't use them unless I'm gonna send a scratch mix to my client. So this is sort of a fast mastering uh, thing I do because the clients, they often wanna hear the mixes as loud as they hear it uh, on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. That was the mix. Was it fast enough? Please tell me. Fast in Swedish is snub. Snub. <laughs> Until next time, Roger that. <laughs>